Well, good evening. Welcome back to Grace Baptist Church. I am so thankful as always to have a few minutes of your time in, here in the middle of the week, and I uh, trust that you are, are doing well tonight. If you're finding us for the first time, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us here in our online sessions. Uh, we have been studying through a series on attitudes, and we've reached actually the final session of this study. And so this will be our very last one uh, on this series. And so if you are jumping in, if you're finding this for the first time and you're at the last uh, session and you've not watched the others, I would invite you to, to uh, go find the beginning session and work your way through uh, this study. I hope it's been a help to you. It's been an encouragement and a challenge, as you'll hear in a moment, uh, for me as well. But we are so thankful to have you here with us if this is your first time or if you've been following along throughout this entire series. If you are joining us uh, brand new, first time, there is a space down in the comment section. If you could uh, share some information about yourself, we would love to have a record of you joining us online. And we would also want to answer any questions that you may have about our ministry. And we just thank you so much for tuning in. I also want to just comment very quickly as I do each week, just thank everyone for their continued financial support uh, to our ministry. And if you would like to help us uh, continue to provide content and also uh, provide our services here in our live services as well. You can give through our website, gracenc.org, and we appreciate every little, every little bit of help uh, that we receive, and uh, we are so thankful for God's provision for us. So as I mentioned, we have been working our way through a series on attitudes, and we have reached now the very final session of this study and i've gotten some emails from some of you that have have expressed your um, delight might not be the best word but your uh, excitement about this series and that this has been a challenge to some of you and i know each time that i study this area of attitudes it's always a challenge to me as well and again i'll give you an illustration about that here in just a moment uh, but we want to uh, comment here in our last session, reiterate something we've been saying each week <clears throat> and certainly began in the very first session, uh, talking about the fact that our attitudes really are a choice. We can choose how we uh, respond to the circumstances of life. We can't control everything that comes at us. Okay, We can't pick our circumstances all the time. We can't always choose how things go throughout the, the course of the day. And so we all face on a daily basis, we face pressures, we face disappointments, we face frustrations, we face interpersonal conflict with people. We have all different kinds of irritations that come at us. And the problem is, or maybe the challenge for us is, is that when we face these challenges and we face these difficulties, we have to kind of hit the pause button and just stop and remember that we truly can, in fact, choose how we respond to the issues of life. So I'm going to read for you here uh, the course throughout the course of the series what the kind of negative attitudes have been, okay, what we have looked at. If you go back and you listen through these or maybe you remember one week we looked at a negative attitude and then the following week we looked at a attitude that that would replace our sinful attitudes so let me read for you the list of kind of the sinful attitudes that we are all tempted to give into and as i read these there's five of them i want you to ask yourself the honest question which one of these five do you predominantly struggle with okay which one is particularly problematic for you. So number one we looked at is we studied complaining, okay? That complaining is uh, very much often, typically, complaining is toward our circumstances, okay? I used the illustration uh, way back when we started this series that this summer I, I vowed that I would not complain about the heat, okay? As we're recording this today, the last couple of days, has been very fall-like here in North Carolina this morning when I got up and uh, headed out to uh, go to my my gym where I go. There was frost on my car. Okay, that's my kind of weather. Okay, long sleeve weather, uh, sweatshirt weather. That's what I like. Okay, so I'm very tempted in kind of a, 
uh, pitiful sort of way to complain when it's hot, all right? But maybe that's not an issue for you. Maybe you complain when it's cold. Regardless of which one you fall on, we all tend to complain about our circumstances. The second and second negative attitude or sinful attitude that we looked at was the attitude of covetousness. I have a neighbor of mine who uh, is a young man, and he had a very nice Dodge uh, Charger that he's been actually, it was a Charger, uh, that he had been uh, driving around in, very nice car. Well, he just recently got himself a brand new, very nice, very sleek Ford Mustang, and he has been showing it off in our cul-de-sac, very large engine, and I sit there and kind of salivate just thinking about this car, okay, this wonderful piece of machinery that, that he has bought. Well, that reveals at times an attitude in our hearts of covetousness. We want something that maybe God has forbidden, or we want something to a sinful degree or outside of the boundaries that God has given to us. So we studied that. We also studied criticalness, okay? Having a critical attitude. This is predominantly displayed toward people. We tend to complain about circumstances. We tend to be critical about people. And throughout this series, in the negative attitude aspect of this, we have studied a lot about the people of Israel coming out of the land of Egypt, and they became very critical of Moses. They became very negative and very, uh, very uh, destructive in how they treated him. And we study that in detail throughout this series. We also looked at doubting, okay, that sometimes we question, particularly we, we question God, okay? We don't always lean on God and have faith in God. We often doubt the promises of God. We doubt his goodness. We doubt his provision, his, his ability to provide. We often allow doubt to creep into our minds. And so we spent a session talking about doubt. The last sinful attitude that we talked about just a couple of weeks ago was the attitude of rebelliousness, okay? That within us, we like to do things in our own strength, in our own way, and we like to do things according to our own plan. So when you think about those five, which one would you put a check by and say, that's one that I really struggle with? Maybe there's more than one. Maybe there's two. Maybe Maybe you struggle with all five to some degree. But in response to that, let me just read through these very quickly. We looked at five godly attitudes that we are to display, and they were thankfulness to offset our complaining. We looked at contentment to offset our covetousness. We looked at love to offset our critical nature. We looked at faith that we need to offset our tendency to doubt God. And then lastly, we looked at submission to authority in response to our tendency to be rebellious, particularly toward our political leaders and also toward those that are our leaders um, in our places of employment, okay? And so we looked at those. So before you can change your attitude, you really have to first define which one of these attitudes do you particularly struggle with? And as you think about that, maybe an answer came right to your mind. Maybe one came right to the forefront of your mind. Um, this past weekend, now, we had an uh, interesting couple of days at our house. Uh, we I'll give you the short version in this session about what happened, but uh, we had a hot water heater that went bad. And thankfully, by God's grace, there were some signs that this hot water heater was failing and it was located on our second floor. And since we lived in the house we live in, I've, I've always said, I'm a little fearful if that thing ever leaks or blows or what have you, we're gonna have some very serious problems on our hands. Well, as the Lord would have it, we had some uh, indication that it was failing. And so we were able to get it changed out and get it out of our, our house uh, and get a new one before we had any significant problems. Well, I spent most of Friday uh, this past week doing that. A couple guys came over. Actually, they were doing most of the work. Um, I certainly am not a plumber and, and outside of my ability, but I had to help them and a couple things, getting it down the stairs and that sort of thing. Saturday turned into a day of uh, painting and a day of some other chores going on around the house. And uh, we had things going on with the kids. The kids had to be here. One had to go here and this person had to go do this. It was a very hectic 
um, kind of 48, actually 72 hours because Sunday here we had services and we had some commitments in the afternoon. It was a, it was a crazy weekend, but I will tell you this on Saturday, this past Saturday, we had a, a family as a family, we had some very, uh, less than godly attitudes. Okay. We, we, we had some conflict between a couple family members. We had, uh, just people being very short tempered and we had people just kind of not getting along very well. And I was thinking through this series and thinking about the fact that because there were so many things coming at me, coming at my wife, my kids were tired. Uh, my oldest son had to work a lot of hours over the weekend. It was just a very trying weekend. And maybe you experienced that in, in your life. Okay, you have things that are coming at you. You have stressors coming at you. In fact, uh, we're we're preaching through Philippians right now, and um, I'm preparing for our our Sunday sermon, and that sermon is going to be on anxiety. Okay, and so we know that these things come at us. It creates creates anxiousness in our soul. It creates attitudes in us. But I want to leave you in this series with some truths about your attitude understanding that all of these are under underneath the main principle being you can choose your attitude okay we can choose a different attitude when we tempted to be critical we can choose to be gracious and kind rather than being critical so let me give you some truths about attitudes number one your attitudes reveal your true self this may come as a shock to you or maybe this actually is something that discourages you a little bit, but I don't want it to. I want you to hear what Jesus said in Matthew 15 and listen to what he says in verse 18. He said, what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and this defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. Okay, so Jesus makes this very simple Uh, principle that we have to live by is that what comes out of us, this includes our attitudes, what comes out of us by nature is what is residing in our heart. So when I think about the attitude that I particularly may struggle with, I can know that I struggle with having a critical nature or having a covetous heart, whatever it may be. I can't just say, you know, you could say, well, Pastor Jay, you've been saying for weeks now that we can change our attitude. That's true. But it starts with a heart change. And I have to understand that when I covet something, my neighbor's brand new Mustang, what is it that my heart is really craving? You see, I'm wanting something that might not be sinful. It's not sinful to own a Mustang. It may be sinful if I can't afford it. It may be sinful if I'm neglecting other responsibilities to have this car, what have you. But I have to understand that when covetousness or critical nature or complaining or doubt, all these things creep in my mind and they come out of my mouth, it is revealing what is inside my heart. So it's not enough to just practice behavior modification it is developing a true heart that that wants to please God above everything else and wants to please God in our attitudes as well as our actions. So we have to remember that our attitudes reveal what is inside of our hearts. Now, with that being said, let me share with you a second truth about our attitudes is our attitudes set the direction for our lives. I would tweak that a little bit and say this, our heart sets the direction for our lives because we are either going to follow God or we're going to follow ourselves or follow man. But when we think about our attitudes, the attitude that I bring to a situation is actually going to set the direction of my life. Look, I, I couldn't choose the fact that my hot water heater was failing at a very inconvenient time. Okay, I didn't schedule that on my calendar to say on this day, I want my hot water heater to fail and I want to um, spend this whole entire day trying to get this fixed. Okay, it didn't happen that way. It happened at a pretty inconvenient time. 
I can't, I can't change that, but I can at that moment redirect my heart and make sure that I don't get wrapped up in frustration and rebelliousness and, and an ugly attitude because of what has happened. So my attitude sets the direction of my heart of my life because they are driven from my heart. Number three, and I want you to hear this one. Your attitude is primarily is primarily revealing your view of God. In other words, our attitudes are not primarily directed at those around me. They really are a response to how I view God. A wrong attitude really is, in a sense, a theological problem. Listen to Psalm 51 when the psalmist says, Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done evil in thy sight, that thou might be justified when you speak and be clear when you judge. You see, our sin, all sin, it affects people. This past Saturday, when we were all struggling with our attitudes, we were sinning against each other because we weren't very kind and we weren't patient with each other. But ultimately, we were sinning against God because our attitudes really reveal for us our view of God. Let's take let's take just two as a quick example. If I live doubting God all the time and I am consumed with doubt and I don't have faith, what we are saying is that we are doubting God's goodness. We're doubting God's character. We're doubting God's power. So when doubt comes out of my mind and out of my mouth, I am actually expressing a lack of trust in God. That's why the replacement attitude is to have faith, faith that God is who he says he is. When we think about the attitude of covetousness, when I am wanting something that God has forbidden, or I am wanting something that God says is okay to have, but I want it outside of his boundaries, or I want it in a to a degree that it becomes sinful, it becomes a life-dominating problem. My sin is really against God because I am covetous and I am not content with what God has given to me. So I'm really sinning against God. I am telling him that in fact, God, you have made a mistake. When I am complaining about my circumstances, I am saying that God doesn't know best for what I need in my life. So when we think through each and every one of these, our attitudes, while they certainly influence and impact those people around us, it really is an indication that we are sinning against God because our hearts are sinful and they are flowing from our sinfulness. Number four, let me give you a fourth truth about our attitudes. Our attitudes become habits. And so therefore, when they become habitual, they do admittedly become very difficult to change. We have learned much of our attitudes, many of them. We have learned how to respond to life's challenges. We have learned how to respond to life's difficulties. And so we have to be honest and say, that we have to admit that much, many of our responses to life and what comes at us are things we have learned. We have learned these responses and they have become habitual for us. We have to be honest about that and admit that, but understand number five is that our sinful attitudes can be defeated through repentance. In fact, Numbers chapter 21, verse 7 says this, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he takes away these serpents from us. In fact, Psalm 59 says this, I will sing of your power. Yea, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning, for you have been my defense and my refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto you, O my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense and God and, and, and the God of my mercy. Notice this God-centered direction of our repentance. Yes, we are sinning against God when we choose a sinful attitude, but our repentance has to acknowledge that our attitudes are sinful. Yes, they become a habit, but that doesn't make it right. It doesn't excuse the fact that we have to repent 
of our of our sin, even the sins of our ungodly attitudes. Number six, our sinful attitudes can be defeated only when we remain steadfast and stand against temptation. Galatians 5 says this, the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Now, the idea here is that I am bringing my actions and reactions under the control of the Holy Spirit of God, and he is giving me self-control, the ability to stand against the temptation to sin against God when it comes to my, my attitude. In fact, Paul said in Romans 8, 13, if we live after the flesh, you will die, but through the Spirit, you do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And so we have to stand against our flesh and stand against our temptation to give into these negative attitudes. Now, if we go back to those five, I don't know which one, again, or two that maybe you particularly struggle with, complaining, covetousness, criticalness, doubting, or rebellion. I don't know which one you may kind of put the check mark by and say, that's my primary one. You have to understand that this is flowing from your heart. Repentance is necessary to get this right between you and God. And then it is a temptation for each and every one of us to fall into these attitudes on a repeated basis. So we need the power of the Holy Spirit to keep us from falling into these sinful attitudes. Uh, not long after my wife and I were married, uh, we've been married now, um, the time of this recording, almost 26 years. And we noticed that some of our very good friends that we hung around with a lot had very critical attitudes and they, they, tended, they tended to complain and they tended to gripe and they continued to just find fault with people and that sort of thing. And Michelle and I remember us talking about it and we kind of came to this conclusion that we were guilty of the same thing and that sometimes the people that we chose to hang around with often were critical in nature and so we came to the realization that well we might enjoy their company because we enjoy complaining too we enjoy being critical of others we we enjoy that because if we're honest when i'm putting somebody else down or i'm criticizing somebody else it makes me feel better it makes me feel good or if i'm complaining about my circumstances then somehow those things are out of my control and i'm making an excuse for my behavior so Michelle and I made a, a, a commitment that we would, if we kept the circle of friends, that we wouldn't fall into that anymore. We would guard our tongues and we would do our best in these situations to redirect the conversation. Over time, and obviously life has a way of changing friendships and relationships um, over time, especially my wife and I moved several times early on in our marriage, but the Lord kind of got us away from some of those friends and really put us in with another group of people that we started learning to control our tendency to complain, our tendency to be critical of others. Uh, my wife and I, I think, would say we both grew up um, in, in homes where um, it was very tempting to criticize others. And so it became a very real battle for us, and we committed to try in the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome that and to uh, work through that. And by God's grace, for the most part, we have done that. doesn't say we don't fall into that from time to time, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, we realize that, we recognize that, we repented of that, we made some practical changes, got away from some friends, but learned to guard our tongues around others. And maybe that's what God is calling you to do. It might not be through complaining or being critical, but maybe there is one of these attitudes that the Lord right now is laying on your heart and saying, you need to change this. This attitude in your life is destroying relationships. It is distancing you from a, an intimate relationship with God. And you know the Holy Spirit right now is laying that on your heart. You need to repent of that, but you also have to continually stand against temptation. We often think of temptation, as I, as I end our session tonight, we often think about temptation, about things that we do outwardly. In reality, those temptations often begin in our minds. We are often tempted 
to worry, to become anxious. We're tempted to dwell on things that are not true. We tend to dwell on things that are sinful. And oftentimes it's our thinking, we fail in our thinking way before we fail in our actions. And I would say the same is, is in regard to our attitudes. When we are tempted to say a sharp word or a critical word or a complaining word or a doubtful word or give in to covetousness, whatever it may be, that I have to arrest that thought, take it captive, and under the power of the Holy Spirit of God, bring that under submission to God and to his word. I was talking to a friend of mine recently, and he was telling me of a of a business owner that he knows, and, and he said that this person has a tendency to create um, kind of fictitious stories in his mind of things that are not true, but he acts on them. And so I think very often that's how our minds work. We tell ourselves a story. We tell ourselves, I have the right to complain. I have the right to be critical. I have the right to do these different things. In reality, we need to guard against the temptation, not fall into these sinful attitudes, put them off and replace them with an attitude that pleases God. I hope and pray that this series has been a help to you and challenged you. It has been to me as I've had the privilege of teaching through it. And uh, we'll be beginning a new series here in just a week or so. Uh, We'll be kicking off a new series. And uh, so keep tuning in each Wednesday and uh, we'll keep uh, challenging you through scripture and uh, we'll be again presenting a new series here in the next week or two and uh, so keep tuning in and again if we can be of any any help to you please contact us through gracenc.org you can email us and we would love to hear from you and uh, we would love to be able to answer any questions you may have as we always do each session let me pray with you very quickly and then uh, we'll end our session together tonight let's pray God, thank you for your goodness. Forgive us of those times that we fail into, fall into these sinful patterns of thinking and sinful attitudes. Lord, empower us through your spirit to stand against the temptation to sin in our attitude. Thank you for the privilege of speaking through this series, and we pray it would help each and every one of us to grow and change. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.